Hello, friends. This is Tim Schur here. Welcome to our first program on uh, this is our hour of power together. This is on the secrets to creating uh, better health, wealth and peace of mind. I'm excited to be with you. I'll tell you a little bit about my background in a moment, but I want you to know what this show is about and why you will care. All right. This show is really about you. It's about your success and helping you to achieve the goals that you have in your life and how to reach those goals faster and easier than you've ever done before by learning how to program your mind for success. Instead of relying on hope or willpower, instead we're gonna use the tools and the technology that you were born with, the resources that you have inside of you already to be able to streamline your success. So instead of chasing your goals, you learn how to attract them to you. You learn how to feel so strong and valuable inside of you that you become more valuable to the world and then you become uh, really happy and healthy and wealthy in every area of your life. And so this program is designed to give you a lot of tools and strategies that you probably have not heard of before. I know there's a lot of pop psychology stuff out there. Uh, but I've been sitting down with people for the last 21 years. I've done tens of thousands co of coaching sessions. And uh, my background, what kind of made me famous was um, my experience with hypnotherapy and neurolinguistic programming, the stuff that, that uh, is a backbone for a lot of famous people like Tony Robbins, uh, who started off as an Ericksonian hypnotherapist and using NLP, neurolinguistic programming, and then kind of morphed it into his own thing. And that's what a lot of us do. And that's what I've done, too. But when you sit down and do 20,000 sessions, you learn a lot about people and how people think and what's going on inside of them and what their emotional recipes are. An emotional recipe is basically something that you do inside of you that leads you to a specific feeling. And those feelings determine how you behave on a consistent basis. And your consistent behaviors attract or repel what you most desire. So I encourage you to jump in here with me and... Uh, you know, ask any questions that you might have if you are just looking to take your success to the next level or if you're struggling in some area, if you're having trouble improving your health or you want to grow your business and you're struggling or you need some help with um, something from the past that you feel like you haven't been able to overcome or you feel like there's some invisible block and you're not sure what it is, but it's keeping you stuck. Or maybe there's some fear, you know exactly what to do, but you can't get yourself to do it. I've been through all of those situations. So I would be happy to share what I've learned about how to get through that in a way that's very comfortable and in a way that's very empowering and a way that can jumpstart your success. So a little bit of my background, I was trained as a psychotherapist uh, a long time ago. I've got my master's in clinical psychology and uh, I've taken that and, and turned that into using it to help people in my private practice that I've had for the last 21 years. So I've helped people with just about every goal there is. And then I took these tools and strategies out into the world and wrote a bunch of books, uh, The Power of Optimism, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do, uh, Get Out of Your Way, The um, Sales Mastery, you know, a lot of different programs. The latest one is called The Secret Ingredient. And so uh, and then I took these tools and insights into corporate America. So I've worked with a lot of big clients and brand names that you've heard of, I'm sure. And uh, it's pretty amazing what. Uh, what you can accomplish with people when you start to open their minds and teach them how to use the inner resources that you already have. You've got pretty extraordinary technology and resources inside of you already. It's just that a lot of times we've never really taken a course on on how our mind works or how to program ourselves for success. Instead, we just kind of wing it, right? Or we do what we saw our parents do or what we see others around us do. Or maybe we'll read a couple of self-help books, but it's a lot different. You know, reading a book on swimming is very different than getting in the water. <laughs> and the only way to really learn how to swim is to get in the water and splash around. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice there comes a point where suddenly you feel confident and you know how to swim. So think about this. You know, is there anything different in your ability that moment before you knew how to swim and that moment after you felt like you were going to be able to swim? Was there anything different with your physiology? Did your body change in any way? Did you suddenly have profound knowledge or wisdom? No. No. You had the same tools, the same abilities, always at your disposal. You just suddenly had the right combination and the right confidence that allowed you to go from not believing to believing. And you have the same technology, you have the same resources, you have the same abilities inside of you right now for any other goal. So if you want to lose 100 pounds or you want to make an extra $20,000 this year or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what your goal is. The goals are there so that we have our journey. 
the journey is what shapes us and helps us to grow, mature, and find greater fulfillment. Because once you reach your goal, you're just going to set another goal. So people who climb mountains, once they get to the top of the mountain, what do they want to do? They want to climb the next one or they want to go back. It's all about the climb, right? It's about the journey. So, and the tougher the journey, the better the glory, the sweeter the glory. Benjamin Franklin once said that, um, you know, kites rise highest against the wind. It's only through resistance that we're able to really reach our highest, fullest potential. And so this show is designed to help you reach your fullest potential. Now, why am I spending the time doing this show? Because of two reasons. One, my favorite thing to do, my hobby, is to help people succeed. I just like it. I like watching people go from a breakdown to a breakthrough. You know, when you when the lights come on in their eyes, when they go, oh, I get it. When they start to feel excited, when they go from fear and anxiety, which I was riddled with my whole life. It's one of the reasons why I went into psychology, right? That field attracts wounded people who are trying to feel better. And I was one of them. And so, uh, so I love helping other people feel that sense of peace the way that I've learned to, to experience it. So it just it makes me feel good to help you feel good. The second reason is because of uh, one of my mentors, Zig Ziglar, who was a amazing man and uh, a legend in the field of motivational speaking and uh, um, others focused selling. And he always said that you can't put yourself at the top. you got to help other people get to where they're going and then they will put you on their shoulders and carry you to where you want to go. Right. If you just make it all about yourself and you don't really add value for anyone except you, even if you get results, you'll often lose them. And I started off that way because of my worry and my fear. I wasn't playing the game of life to win. I was playing not to lose. And a lot of people I find are doing that. They're playing not to lose. So you build something up and then it crashes and then you build something up and then it crashes. And there's no real sustainability. What we want to do is make sure that we shift that so that we feel so good inside of ourselves that we're able to share that good feeling with those around us, that we can really feel so secure that we don't have to make it about us anymore. We can make it about others. One of the best things I heard at the beginning of the year was, what if your New Year's resolution had nothing to do with you? What if your New Year resolution was to help make somebody else's dream come true and you're willing to do whatever it took to make that happen? When you really take a stand for those around you and you do whatever it takes to help them succeed, even if you get nothing from it directly, then uh, then you will often find yourself going to a whole new level of success. And I was just too scared to believe that. I was afraid that I was going to get screwed over. I was going to get hurt, that, that it wouldn't, wouldn't work out. And where am I coming from then? I'm coming from a place of scarcity. And then, of course, that's a direction that I went in. Because whatever you focus on, where your attention goes, that's where your energy flows. In the Talmud, an ancient wise Jewish book, it says that uh, you don't see the world as you are. You see the, or you don't see the world as it is, the world as you are. So life is like a big mirror. So if I'm coming from a place of scarcity, worrying that somehow I'm going to get hurt, then I would unconsciously do things to actually cause that to happen. And what a drag, right? And so we want to make sure that we are coming from a place of peace and a place of abundance. And that means you got to do the inner work. You know, success and happiness is really an inside job. And all the corporations that I've worked with, their secret sauce isn't their new fancy marketing, how they've done their corporate restructuring, how they've uh, you know created their values and have pizza parties on Friday. That's all well and good. And it all has its place. It's all important. But the secret sauce, the stuff that really makes companies successful is when they grow their people, when they develop their people, when they go in and they shift the psychology of the people that they work with. So that people are having honest, direct conversations with each other. They're assuming the best in each other. They're not getting caught up in dramas and fears that are really originating from inside of themselves and then projecting it onto others. They're starting to really take a look at themselves and shift what's going on in the way that they think, in the way that they feel. They start to change some of those old conditioned responses that they've had since they were kids. And it starts to help them to have more awareness. They become more mindful. And then they become... Um, more able to be the cause in their life instead of the effect of it. And when you have people that start taking ownership of their feelings and their thoughts and they start wanting to contribute at a higher level and help each other succeed, I heard a great quote one time uh, from a gentleman named O'Malley who his parents and family own a, a grocery store in, in Indianapolis where I'm from. And they said that, uh, you know, it's amazing what you can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. 
In fact, it's even better when you're willingly giving other people credit, when you're validating other people. I have a little acronym that I teach, and it's just called LUV, L-U-V, and it stands for listen to, understand, and validate. Listen to, understand, and validate. When you're really listening to other people, which most don't, most are too busy talking, when you really seek first to understand instead of being understood, and when you start to really intentionally go around validating people, specifically, not just blowing you know, um, uh, compliments you know, and, and complimenting people and not really being sincere, but really genuinely you know, finding ways that we are similar and finding ways to appreciate one another, it unlocks magic. It says to the universe that you are uh, happy and peaceful and joyful and abundant. And so because of the law of attraction, uh, what you put out comes back. You know, you you vibrate at a certain level because you're vibrating at that certain level. It seems like life starts to bring more situations into your life to you. The right people, the right situations, the right opportunities. Your mind will, will notice the clues that are always around you. I call them hidden opportunities. They're always around you. And your mind will start catching them and tuning into them because you're aware at that level. You're vibrating at that level. You're sensory awareness is kind of tuned in to that. And as a result, you start real feeling like, you know, everything's working for your advantage. You know, you're still going to have bumps in the road. You're still going to have challenges. The wind's still going to blow in your life. And that's good because the kite rise higher when uh, the wind blows, right? So you're still going to have the challenges, but now you're embracing them as opportunities. You're not getting caught up and feeling like what you're doing isn't working and it's crap. Instead, what you're doing is saying that, you know what, here's some feedback. What am I going to do? This is going to cause me to grow and stretch. It's going to take me to the next level. And that enthusiasm and that attitude keeps you moving forward, keeps you growing, keeps you looking for the next opportunity. And that is what all successful people have in common. They call it grit, right? That's the catch word for right now. You know, when you take your passion and your perseverance and you combine it with a, with a desire to keep moving forward no matter what. Les Brown used to say that everybody gets knocked down. So if you're going to fall down, land on your back. Because if you can see up, you can get up. And if you can get up, you can get going, right? And so we want to make sure that we are believing in ourselves and focusing on doing the inner work that allows us to reach unbelievable levels of success and happiness so that you have or so that you're happy with what you already have and then you keep attracting more into your life. If you're never content or happy with what you have, then you're coming from scarcity and you're never going to feel satisfied no matter what you get. It will never feel like it's enough. So, all right, I have rambled on a lot here, and I'm just trying to help you understand a little bit of who I am and what my philosophy is. So I hope you stick around and join me. If it's not a good fit, that's okay. You'll find someone, uh, or you'll be that voice for somebody else. Uh, so the purpose of this show is, again, to teach people how their mind works and how to uh, get results faster and easier by training your brain for success. I strongly invite you to answer any questions that you might have to uh, jump in the room with me uh, so that we can do some things together. I'll tell you from from 27 years of studying human behavior, I'm very good at reading people. And so I can understand what's going on inside of you, uh, what your best um, strategies are that will keep you successful and what are the things that might be holding you back just by how you breathe, how you hold your body language, what you say to yourself, where your eyes are moving around. Uh, you know, when uh, the little uh, facial expressions, when you relax and when you get tense, I can tell so much about what's going on in your inner mind if I can see you. So that's why I'm using this platform. So thank you for the founders of Lab, because uh, this gives us the opportunity to be able to to uh, reach out to people all over the world and have meaningful conversations. And uh, my whole per per my whole purpose is to help you to realize how wonderful you really are and to help you get to where you want to go. OK, so. Please answer uh, or ask any questions that you might have or feel free to um, to jump in here and we'll go from there. OK, so thank you. <laughs> All right. Terrific. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and move forward. If no one's going to jump in right away, then uh, let me just give you a couple of uh, a little bit of a background of, of me and my story and where I came from. So I grew up in a little town in northern Indiana called Hobart, Indiana. And uh, it was it was kind of a, a cool town. It was a small town. And I grew up in the 70s. And um, and so I remember uh, having the skyscrapers of Chicago on one side of me and all the cornfields from Indiana on the right side of me. And I felt like I could really connect with anybody. 
And um, but I grew up very insecure. I was very hyper. I had a lot of worries and fears. And and uh, and then when I was 12 years old, something happened that really pushed me over the top. Uh, my dad worked at U.S. Steel and he was an electrician and he was working on one of those big breakers out there at the mill. I don't know if you've ever been at a steel mill, but um, they're scary places. And um, so he was in there with the screwdriver. His buddy Bill was in there with the flashlight and the box didn't get tagged properly. So while they were in there, somebody turned the power on and boom. It exploded, caught my dad and Bill on fire. Uh, I didn't see my dad for three months after that. You know, he was in Loyola Burn Unit and, uh, you know, it was a horrible thing. Uh, I was the one that got the call. You know, the phone rang and I remember picking up the phone. Hello, uh, honey, is your mom there? There's been an accident. And I was like, oh, my whole world changed there. I ended up moving in with my grandparents. Uh, you know, my mom would have basically moved into the burn unit. When I did finally see my dad, uh, it didn't look like my dad. It looked like a mummy. He was all wrapped up in bandages and, you know, his lips were all charcoal. His fingernails were missing. I mean, it was just a horrible sight. You walk through there as a kid, you hear people screaming and moaning. Oh, bad, bad scene, right? So I ended up with all this post-traumatic stress. Now, the good news is that my dad survived. And even though he has scars, he's the first one to take off his shirt in the, you know, in the summer and go swimming, right? He, he made it. But uh, I ended up having all these scars on the inside. In my mind, instead of playing the game of life to win, I started playing not to lose. And when you play not to lose, guess what happens, <laughs> right? You lose. And so I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to figure out how to uh, you know, put my life back together. And, and uh, so when I was in high school, I had my first psychology class as a senior and I thought, all right, maybe this is where I can figure me out. And then they had a guest speaker come in and he was a hypnotist. And I thought, okay, I'll volunteer. I want to cluck like a chicken. I didn't know anything about it. And so um, uh, I didn't cluck like a chicken, but I had this feeling of peace and it was the first time that anxiety disappeared. Now that was weird for me because I always had it. It just went away. I was so relaxed and so blissful and so peaceful. It was amazing. And the hypnotist said that it's not the hypnosis. It's you. The magic's inside of you. It's in your brain that's the magic. I'm just showing you how to unlock it. And I thought that was amazing. And I got hooked on it. Now, the anxiety came back because I was good at doing anxiety, if you know what I mean. And so, uh, but I, um, I decided that I had to figure this out. So I went to Indiana University and they were very behavioral. They were into B.F. Skinner and behavior modification and rewards and consequences. And they really weren't into this hypnosis stuff, this airy, fairy metaphysical stuff. And so I was, though, I got hooked on it because I had an experience. So that's why whenever I'm working with anybody in corporate America or on a seminar that I put on or one on one coaching, I teach a little bit, but I create experiences because people transform not through information, but through emotional experiences that cause this aha moment and a new neuro association in their brain where they associate a new emotion to an old behavior that creates a more empowering uh, connection. Right. So you used to be scared in situations and now you feel more calm and confident in situations. Having anxiety, I used to be terrified of public speaking. Now I love it and I get paid a lot of money to be a public speaker. Well, I'm not a speaker. I'm an expert who knows how to speak. There's a big difference there. <laughs> so, but anyway, so um, so I went to school and, and found another school in a town, you know, a couple hours away and went to a hypnosis school. And, and uh, that opened my eyes to all these other peak performance technologies that were out there that I had never heard of. So I went to school for psychology for another six, seven years, a couple of grad schools. And, and then I realized that I didn't want to go down that route of being a psychologist or a psychiatrist because the talk therapy just didn't seem to get enough results. You could talk forever and not really change anything. And so I wanted tools that were going to shift people fast. And I wanted to specialize in helping people with post-traumatic stress because that's what I had. And so uh, I spent the next you know 27 years of my life. That's why I got the white in my beard. <laughs> the next 27 years of my life, learning every kind of tool and strategy that was, uh, you know, available to me. Anything that had letters. So I learned NLP, EFT, EMDR, <laughs> you know, anything that, that could shift the way that we are uh, perceiving the world around us and the information that how, it, how it's uh, flowing within us. And if we could shift that then, uh, you know, then maybe the magic could happen. And, oh, I have seen some magic. I've worked with people who have been through the worst stuff, rapes, kidnappings, torture. I mean, horrible things that people have been through. 
right? The loss of parents, the loss of children, uh, just, you know, lots of nightmares and horror stories. And I'll tell you though, human beings are incredibly resilient. People do have the ability to put their life back together. If you can ha find a way to give it meaning, uh, it's not the situations that happen to us. It's the meaning that we give to it. It's what how we interpret it. That's what makes the difference. That's what transforms how we think and how we feel and how we behave. And so I'm always inspired by human beings, by what they can do. I mean, we have a capacity for harm and we also have a capacity for healing and love. And so I think that it's incredible that, um, uh, that, that uh, we have the opportunity to choose. <laughs> All right. Hey, there's a caller coming in. I'm going to click this and see what happens. Seeing. Okay. All right. Wonderful. I hope this works because I really appreciate all your uh, comments. <laughs> Audio only poor internet signal. Okay. Let me turn this up. Maybe at least I can hear you. Hello? One second. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, you have a lovely oh. voice. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to plug my computer in real quick because I just realized that I didn't do that. So hang on one second. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to the program. Yeah, that's very interesting. I just love psychology or something like those stuff I love to hear. Actually, I don't want to speak because it is recording. That's why I'm I'm listening to you. It's very nice. You're so nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Thank I want to say. Thank you. Yes, well, you are too. I can tell just by how you want to uh, be so supportive and you're so caring and you're putting out all this love and uh, and that's wonderful. So. If you do have a particular topic or uh, question or something that, that maybe you want to throw out there, you know, that I can help you with, that would be great. Or I can just keep going on. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, actually, you're doing so, I mean, you're so great. I just want to listen to you, what you are saying. I'm a good student, I can say. Uh, please continue what you are uh, talking or saying please continue i want to listen very good all right thank you very much okay so all right so what happens when you spend you know 21 years sitting down with people and you know having conversations with them on how to be happy and how to achieve goals my clients come to me because they want to lose weight they want to break bad habits they want to overcome fears from the past they want to improve their relationships. They want to make more money. They want to have the self-confidence to be able to grow a business. To make or, more or money. How, how would you do that? Make more money in the sense, how will you um, tell them, like, how will you motivate? Well, there's, okay, so there's two questions. How do you make more money? And how do you, how do you feel motivated or how do you motivate somebody? So yeah. let me start with the motivation part. Okay, and then I'll and then the money part, okay? Because the money part really comes second. So the way you motivate somebody is you decide what your mission is going to be, right? What is the what is your reason for achieving a goal? You know, what's your big why? So why do you want this? How is it going to help you or serve you or help others or serve the world? If you can take your goal and turn it into a campaign. Some, something that is so important for you, you have to have it, then you'll find that the motivation starts to come naturally. Okay. What happens, though, is most people don't focus on what they want. They spend more time focusing on what they don't want, what they're afraid is going to happen, or all the bad things that can happen if they try. Okay. I, I mean, uh, may I ask one doubt? Sure. I have one uh, -huh. uh i mean how will uh i mean how will they uh what i have to ask actually uh will you question them or how will they answer to you i mean do you have any questions for them to reveal themselves yes yes very good okay so 
one of the questions, I'm going to give you a set of five questions. And these questions will help you to realize what your real values are. Which is most important to you. So hopefully you have something to write with. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. The first question is, what's most important to you? about achieving this goal what's most More important to you about achieving this goal so it might be what's most important to you about passion money? passion dedication okay. hard work okay yeah interest right. first of all we have uh, interest i mean mm, uh, yeah that's it so interest passion what else? What else is most hard important work. about it? Hard, hard, hard work. Hard work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm, yeah, focus. Uh, if you want to do that one, um, I should focus on that thing. And I should be, um, yeah, I should, uh, I mean, I just focus on that uh, thing, What you? what I want to do. That's it. Okay. okay. So one of the things that I heard is that I should, right? I should be doing this. What mm -hmm. keeps you from it, though? Sorry, what keeps you? Yeah, you said I should have focus. I should be doing this. Huh. What, what do you feel might be holding you back? Mm. <laughs> Maybe laziness. <laughs> A lot of times people say laziness, but that's not usually why. Okay, if you were lazy, you wouldn't be jumping on this show. If you were lazy, you wouldn't have made the comments. If you were lazy, you wouldn't have taken the time to join me. But it's not usually lazy. What people do is they've associated some kind of discomfort to the goal. So if you started to take action, what kind of things might hold you back? Uh, in real, if you, if I want to do anything, uh, like I mean, small or big, anything, I really focus and I just do. I mean, even if I am ill or uh, even if I have fever or something, any kind of situation, I just do uh, to complete the task. That's very bad. I I, I know my inner uh, soul is uh, soul says like don't do you have to take rest or you have to do something else please stop pause but uh, i just do i want to complete the task that's it that is uh, that is one negative thing about me i can say yeah okay so let me just clarify all right so once you set a goal you don't stop until you get it even if you're sick or you have a fever you just keep going until you achieve the goal yeah. Okay. Well, in some ways, that's very uh, respectable because you don't let obstacles or excuses get in your way. Mm -hmm. And then you know that you have the ability once you focus your mind on something to actually accomplish it. Let me ask you this. What are you doing inside of you that causes you to keep going towards your goal even if you don't feel well? I just uh, say, I mean, I just say to myself, sorry, I, my English is very poor. Please understand. You're doing great. You're doing great. I, I, I just uh, say, like, please don't take rest. Uh, I have to finish this at any cost. After that, you can rest completely. I, I, I'll say like this whenever I'm doing particular tasks. Uh, I keep saying to my mind like this, and I I complete the task finally, and I will relax. <laughs> After so that. you're answering your own question about how to stay motivated, actually. So if we look at your recipe, what you do is you say to yourself, okay, you say I have to finish. So the first mm -hmm. thing you're doing is you're making it a must. You're not giving yourself the option to quit. And unfortunately, that's what, you know, when most people fail to achieve their goal, that's what they do. They give themselves exceptions. 
well, I'm going to make this happen unless it gets hard, unless something else comes up, unless I don't feel like it. See, in your mind, you're telling yourself, this is a done deal. I'm going to make this happen and I'm not going to stop until I am successful. And that is what anybody that has ever reached a goal has told themselves. So it's very um, powerful. One second, may I ask one question? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, I have answered to you. Uh, actually, my husband or my father or my brother, um, they say, they, uh, they keep saying like, please take rest. Don't mm -hmm. do like that. You are, you are a devil. You are a monster. <laughs> you are doing things like this. You will get ill. Please take some rest. I mean, e even in household things or something like that, I am like, I, I feel like, okay, I am David. <laughs> okay, I am doing this. But I can't stop. Get, they keep saying and even scolding. And uh, is that bad thing? Uh, I, whether I have to improve or something, please advise me. Well, if you are pushing yourself to the point where you're getting sick, then you might need to take a rest and then pick back up again. Because you wouldn't want to get to the point where you've made yourself so sick because who cares if you achieve the goal if you've hurt your health. So in that respect, uh, even race cars, you know, in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, we have what's called the Indy 500, you know, where the race, where the cars go around the track 500 times and, uh, or 500 miles. And, uh, mm -hmm. but even those race cars, they are built for speed and they go fast, but they have to have pit stops. They have to pull over, they gotta change their tires, they gotta refuel, or they won't finish the race. So if the men in your life are telling you to relax so that you um, are taking better care of your health, that's a valid point. On the okay. other hand, if you have this, this passion inside of you, and this energy inside of you, this relentless, energy to achieve a goal that is a blessing that god has given you and other people might not understand it or you might just outwork the people around you and you make them feel insecure <laughs> they may be free to step up <laughs> there's a rim there's a reason why god decided that women were going to have babies because guys would quit you know a couple months into it so so you got to make sure that um that you are uh, believing that this passion that you have is good and it's w part of what makes you special. And sometimes people won't understand it and that's okay. They don't have to because you understand it. And as long as you're taking care of yourself and you're doing it for the right reasons. Now, sometimes we don't let things go because we feel like we have to prove ourselves. And so oh. if you're being, if you're being driven out of that fear that somehow you're not going to be good enough until you achieve this goal, we might want to shift that a little bit. But if oh. you're just a driven person, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're such a positive person. The positive, first time I'm listening a positive thing uh, from others, from other, I mean, from outsider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a relief. <laughs> yes. You know, you got to talk to some, you know, other people because, they say that sometimes you just need one person to believe in you so you can believe in yourself. And today I am believing in you. And I want you to keep believing in yourself because you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. So let's keep breaking down this success strategy that you have because it's really working for you and it will work for anybody else that ever happens to watch this show. So the first thing you did in your mind was you told yourself, I have to achieve this goal. Right. So you made it a must. No excuses. If it gets hard, you lean in and you keep pushing forward. The second mm. thing you did was you told yourself that I will rest afterwards. So what you mm. did was you a reward. You have a payoff. So if I push and I push, then I can rest. Then I can feel good. And I mm. think that's very smart as well. Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's nice. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Now let's come back to that other word that you said before, laziness. Because mm. when you put things off, I don't think it's lazy. I don't think you're lazy at all. I don't think that even exists with you. I think what happens is two things. Okay. You're, you're Actually, it is, 
it is in my mind if i rest uh, while doing this thing i, uh, I maybe i i'll i get some laziness or some something and i won't do again that's why i won't rest actually because i don't yeah. want to get lazy or something <laughs> has that ever happened before actually <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> okay okay so that's valid then so a part of you doesn't want to let go because you're afraid that you might get it, not get it back however because because after so many things happen uh, my body is like uh, very sensitive and very kind of uh, mm, it is very sensitive it became very sensitive and if if i take a rest even for 5 minutes i'll go <laughs> i'll go like complete rest i mean i'll give pause for about 2 3 hours and in my mind uh, i i'm not doing this i'm I, in my mind i'm i'm not uh, very uh, free in my mind uh, in my mind also he, it is thinking like you have to do that one and you are uh, laying <laughs> there and you are you have to do why you are laying you are lazy you are lazy in my mind I, i'm it is thinking like that but i that's the thing actually i don't want to do uh, um my i mean i don't want to strain but i have to do uh, that is something confusion but i'll do <laughs> if i take rest i'll take rest completely that's what i think whenever uh, whatever i am doing yeah so you're describing something that has been a challenge for many people uh when you're in one place you kind of feel like you should be somewhere else and when you're in another place you should feel like you should be there right so sometimes people feel like i should be working on my goal but i should also be spending time with my friends or family or children and then when you're with your friends and family and children you're thinking yeah but i should really be working on this goal and so we're not really happy in either place and so yeah. part of your goal is to be uh to to feel peaceful wherever you are with whatever yeah. you're doing because you're not a human doing you're a human being and so mm -hmm. if you need rest feel really wonderful that you are resting because then you'll be more productive when you achieve your goal if your body's sensitive because you're tired and you're not taking care of yourself you will not be as productive at achieving your goal if your body mm -hmm. feels stress your brain will feel stress and it will limit your ability to see possibilities it'll limit your ability to stay motivated and it will rob you of the joy that you should be experiencing while you're chasing your dream because it the goal shouldn't be just to have fun what when you get to your goal you want to learn to have fun the whole way through okay. so if you're mm -hmm. having more peace uh while you're resting then just tell yourself that that's allowing me to focus my energy so instead of going out like a floodlight you're more like a laser much more focused much more powerful and much more confident so when you're resting love that you're resting that's part of achieving your goal make resting part of achieving your goal and then when you're ready to turn it back on oh you go and go until you can't anymore okay and then you're okay in both places because at the mm -hmm. end of the day it doesn't matter how much you achieve or how much you accomplish what matters is that you feel good about yourself inside Mm -hmm. Okay. You can have that anywhere you're at. <laughs> nice, nice. I mean, yeah, I have to think. I'll follow what you said. I definitely follow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Try it out and see if it's right for you. Any advice that I give anybody, I don't want you to just take it as though it's the truth. I want you to to take it and see what you think about it. Try it out. See if it fits with you and and uh you know and take the pieces that work best for you so i do like uh what someone else said drive is a great virtue yeah i like that it is you know having drive and having passion and pushing yourself and testing yourself you never know how far you can go until you've gone too far as they say right and oh. we put too many limits on ourselves or mm -hmm. other people put limits on us and we have to make sure that we don't fall for either one of those traps 
Please, please continue what you. <laughs> I interrupted I, for so no, long. I'm inspired by you. <laughs> I think no, in any please. conversation, everybody I'm is. Just, and the no, student. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I'm just a normal human being. <laughs> You're such a. I um, so, I mean, after so many years, after my MBA, I'm listening to somebody who is full of knowledge and who is full of uh, positive energy. I can feel positiveness from your eyes, from your, yeah, from your side, from your end. This is the, uh, after long time, I'm, I mean, you're, you're so nice. You resembling like my, um, one lecturer is there. He's so nice person. My MBA lecturer, he's into business management person. He's such a nice person. I, I'm afraid of business management things. And he really tells uh, stories about business in business, like uh, um, small, small stories. Actually, uh, rather than business, I remember all those stories. And in exam, I write uh those things by remembering remembering his stories he's yes. such an impact uh impact lecture i uh, have seen so far after a long period i am seeing you i'm so happy i'm giggling and i'm smiling i'm la laughing actually that is not in uh in, i mean i'm happy to see you that's it i want to say well that's wonderful that's wonderful Yes. Uh, when you tell stories, it causes us human beings to to take the lessons and to feel the lessons. And then we remember them. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're just giving information, it kind of goes in and goes out. We try to memorize some of it. But stories hit us at an emotional level. And that's why all the religions and all the uh, the world religions are always sharing metaphors and parables and stories huh. to us to remember. So I think that's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And remember that your life is a story. You know, yes. this conversation that we're having is a, a small chapter in the story of your life. I'm just a character in your play right now. And so mm -hmm. remember that you can make this movie any way you want it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not what happens to us, it's what we decide to bring to the day that determines what kind of movie we experience in life. And so many of us have forgotten that we are the director of our mind, that we are mm -hmm. the uh, star yes. in this movie. Yeah. We feel like it's just yeah. happening to us. And so, you know, if we look at your strategy again, your motivation mm -hmm. strategy, that was, hey, mm -hmm. I gotta tell myself that I am committing to this. I am all in. I can rest afterwards, I can have these rewards afterwards, but I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to achieve this goal. And then you do. And then your other question way back was, well, how do you make money? Well, by just applying that strategy and then asking yourself, how can I add value? You know, what is it that people need? What can I do to create more pleasure or avoid pain and decrease pain in people's lives? And the more you can increase pleasure and decrease pain in somebody's life, the more valuable you become to them. So even in business management, business management is really people management. Yeah. And the way you motivate and inspire others is to understand what they value and to understand that everybody has a story. And if you can help them feel safe, they'll start sharing that story. I mean, remember, in the beginning, you didn't want to talk. And now you've said so much of this wonderful stuff, right? And my goal was to help you feel safe enough to talk and share so that I could learn from you. And then I could help you. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of that recording button. Uh, I've, um, I have a bitter experience. I don't know how to use Blab. I have how many days I am on Blab? I have to yeah. check. Me One too. or three days. 30 days i don't know first yeah. two days 
um i feel like i have to improve my co- communication skills or i have to listen to so many people because i'm um, i read books a lot and i want to uh, read people uh, like uh, this is um, i thought blabbies uh, um um real good people will be there and real stuff will be there and knowledgeable stuff will be there i thought like that first two days i don't know about blab or something uh I'll, i okay um one uh, one person conducted like you are the host of your this thing na one person has hosted some kind of this thing and he is very um, passionate person i just want to see uh, what he is doing all the things i was i just want to listen and see but he uh, at last he become like weird kind of person he is talking nonsense and it is recording oh god why he is uh, turning himself into negative person he is such a positive person at the beginning that's why i don't want to come and talk after that i just away from the blob so many days <laughs> and uh, luckily from past two days i'm looking uh, for some serious stuff not uh, uh, like uh, time pass stuff or uh, weird kind of stuff uh, and luckily i get into this uh, secrets for improving <laughs> the thing that's why i'm afraid of uh, coming into conversation with you i just want to listen what is going on uh, if i <laughs> if i can't form then uh, i just jumped in that because the recording button is very uh, it's like uh, it is like devil for me right uh, well i understand that right and you if you always have the ability to make another choice, another choice. So if you're connecting with somebody and they start to um act strange or all of a sudden it's not where you want it to go you just click back out and mm. you always have that power but you got to keep going for it. We got to keep trying because every garden, every flower garden is going to have weeds and then you can't get rid of the weeds. And so that's going to happen sometimes. Yes. But if, yes. you, if you want to grow flowers, you got to keep growing the flowers. And so mm. that, that you had this experience. It reminds you that um, you know, to take that next shot. I have a I have um a, a little sign that's right up on my wall here. and uh, and it says you miss 100% oh. of the shots you never take so we want sorry please it. please it explain says, that one please yeah it says you miss 100% of the shots you never take and basically means- what it was a sports metaphor and basically oh. if uh, i think it came from um Wayne Gretzky who was a famous ice hockey player and he said oh. that if you never if you never try to take the shot if you never try to score then you never score so at least okay. take the shot and try mm-hmm. right cuz so many people are afraid of failing they're afraid of mm-hmm. it not working out well the only way to guarantee that it's not going to work out is to not try in fact all the people that i've ever talked to that that have um you know looked back on their life people that um that tried to make something happen even if it failed even if it didn't work out they were always happier that they tried than people who never tried and always wondered what could have happened so you never want to look back on your life and wonder what if instead you take the shot you give it your best try you see what happens and then i have a personal belief that there is no failure there's just feedback you don't fail you just get feedback and then you learn and then you adjust your approach and then you go again and if you keep moving forward then uh you know eventually you'll figure it out in silicon valley they have a saying that says fail fast fail often and fail forward they're not afraid of failure they know that you got to make enough mistakes until you get to the success And so they want you to just keep trying and keep failing. Who cares because every time that doesn't work out, you just got closer to the next thing that will work out. And so you keep moving and you keep trying and you keep putting it out there and you keep visiting with blogs and and blabs and and you keep connecting with people until you find uh, a peer group who 
you feel you can learn from or be supported from, and then you create that environment around you that you're going to be successful. So mm -hmm. you keep taking the shot, you keep trying, you keep looking, and if someone gets weird, you just click out of there and say, okay, there's my feedback. Next. <laughs> you find <laughs> someone else. And if you yeah. keep looking, That's you right. look yes, for hard enough, right. we find. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, this has been wonderful. So I really enjoyed our conversation today. And uh, so <laughs> going to, I'm not exactly sure how this Blab stuff works, so if there's a way to, to stay connected or follow, make sure you do. I plan on uh, doing these shows each uh, one day. Second. How to follow you? Uh, plus, there is a plus person symbol is there, right? I have to click or I don't, I have to click or? Okay, yeah, I might. Okay. Yeah. I might not see that because I'm doing the recording, but yeah, if there's a button to follow me, that would be great. Uh, if you want, I have newsletters. Ah, and yes, yes, stuff. yes, yes, I got you. Click, uh, just touch, uh, touch the person icon and you will see following and follow. Oh, I see. And I have oh, to I see. Huh, okay. Yes. Very good. All right, great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very okay. much for spending time with me. I appreciate it. And for everybody that's um, interested, well, let's see if I have this real quick. Um, I have a uh, free ebook you might be interested in. So I'll give you this link here. Someone told me to do this one. So here it is. So if you can read that. <laughs> okay that I wrote called The Cure for Self-Sabotage. And if you go to uh, cureforselfsabotage.com, you can get a free copy. Uh, okay. So get out there. So if, if you want to stay connected, otherwise, hopefully I'll be back next Friday and uh, we can play um, again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. Nice uh, it was meeting my pleasure. You. Nice meeting you too. What was your first name? Sandhya. Sanjia, so it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And uh, for everybody that joined us, thanks so much. Uh, and remember, as you continue to learn how to master your mind, you will master your life. And I hope that uh, today is a sure success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.